Hi everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make chili crunch. What is chili crunch? Well, it's a crunchy, spicy, garlicky condiment that you can put on anything to take it to the next level of deliciousness. You can use it on anything, avocado toast, dumplings, pizza, tacos, chicken. The uses are endless. Let's get started with slicing our shallots. You can use a knife if you want, but the mandolin gives you a really consistent slice which is helpful when we're frying them. They're going to shrink when we fry them, so let's slice them around 1 8 of an inch thick. Before we fry our shallots, we need to soak them in water for 20 minutes to take some of the sugars out of the shallots, then let them drain on a paper towel. We need to peel the ginger before we slice it. Some people like to use a spoon, but it just makes more of a mess with juice getting all over. A sharp knife or a sharp peeler I think work best. Then slice the ginger around 1 16th of an inch thick and cut into thin strips. The last thing we need to do is cut our garlic. Just put it on a board and chop away. A food processor works for this, but you still want to have chunks of garlic and not garlic paste, so don't over chop it. Let's start making the crunchy part of the sauce. Start with half of the canola oil in a pot and add the ginger to the cold oil. Then turn the heat on low and bring the oil to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We need to cook out all of the moisture from the ginger so it'll be nice and crispy. Once the ginger is golden brown, strain it out and put it onto a paper towel to cool off. Add the rest of the canola oil to our ginger oil and then add the shallots. Turn the heat on low and let the oil come to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Just like the ginger, we want to take our time to let the moisture cook out. If the oil gets too hot, the shallots are going to burn and not get crispy. So take your time when you make these. See how they're nice and golden brown? This is what we're looking for. Strain the shallots and place them on a paper towel to cool off. The sugar in the shallots keep cooking even after we drain them from the oil, so we take them out a little lighter than we want them. Now we can fry our garlic in the hot oil. When you stir the garlic, don't scrape the bottom of the pot. The sugars from the garlic can burn on the bottom of the pot and you'll have little burnt pieces in your garlic. These are Szechuan peppercorns or prickly ash seeds. These are going to give you that numbing sensation called mala that is prevalent in Szechuan food. I'm using a pepper mill to grind my Szechuan and black peppercorns, but if you have a spice grinder, use it. It's a thousand times easier. For the rest of the spices, let's start with star anise and cinnamon, crushed red pepper flake, black sesame seeds, white sesame seeds, mushroom powder, and this is going to give us some umami flavor, or you can use MSG, smoked paprika, kosher salt, and one of my favorite things to use is smoked soy sauce. Then the last thing we need to add to our spice mix is our sesame oil. Bring the oil that we use to fry everything to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and pour on top of our spices. Be careful, it's going to bubble when we pour it over the spices. I'm using just crushed red pepper flake, but you can add in cayenne, ghost peppers, arbol chili, or if you're feeling adventurous, Carolina Reapers. When the oil's cooled down to room temperature, we can add in our fried stuff to the oil and adjust the seasoning if necessary. And this is what you're looking for, a spicy, crunchy, garlicky umami bomb that's great on anything. Thanks for watching my video on how to make chili crunch. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Drop me a comment and let me know what you'd like to put Chili Crunch on. See you next time.